You know, when you're born into Islam, that's your identity, it's who you are. I was born and raised in Amman, Jordan for 14 years. I grew up in a pretty large conservative Muslim, very traditional family. I had a lot of questions in regards to Muhammad's life and just the validity of the Quran and salvation was a big one for me. I felt like I could never keep up or measure up to what was expected out of me and they weren't too keen on me asking those questions and you know they'd always say no one knows but Allah and that just didn't really sit well with me. My father was an alcoholic ever since I could remember and my earliest memory of him was when I was five years old and him kicking me to the ground and spitting at me and calling me names that no father should ever call his five-year-old daughter. My home life continued to get worse in Jordan and my mother, who's an American, was mortified. She was afraid for her life and our lives and my mom encouraged my dad to bring us to America to better our English for you know jobs down the road or schooling and he agreed to. So they moved us from Jordan to America in the year of 2000 and when my dad would come and visit his alcoholism just got worse and worse. That's when I met a boy in high school and we fell in love and um, it felt good to be loved by someone and um, one thing led to another and I found myself on my parents' bathroom floor holding a positive pregnancy test at the age of 17. Had I gone to my dad, um, culturally, um, he would have murdered me and I'm not just saying that figuratively, but that was my reality. He would have murdered me and had I gone to my mom, um, she would have told my dad and same thing would happen. So I didn't really have anybody to confide in and the only person that I confided in was the boyfriend that I was dating at that time. And we felt like we didn't really have a whole lot of options and the only option like we felt we had was to go through with an abortion. That was very hard for me because I've always valued life. I would daydream about what it'd be like to hold my baby one day and to have gone through that was very devastating for me and I struggled with shame, um, embarrassment and depression, anxiety and uh, self-worth and I was trying to fill that pain and that void in my life with things of this world that just made that pain and that void in my life so much bigger and I was just going down a dangerous dark and downward spiral in life. I knew that my sins were deemed unforgivable in Islam and I knew that I was so extremely hated by Allah and at that time I was trying to search for some form of forgiveness and hope and that's when I went to the Quran, I actually opened the Quran and, and I stumbled upon Surah 4, 168 through 169 and it goes something like this, I'm kind of paraphrasing it, but Allah does not forgive those who reject the faith and do wrong and that He doesn't lead them to into a better path and the only path that He leads them to is to hell. And I remember reading that and just feeling so much fear and hopelessness. I said, Allah, I don't know who you are. I don't even know if you exist. And telling him that and I've been praying to you for 20 some years and I've never felt your presence and crying and just thinking of ways how I can end my life because if there's no form of forgiveness for me in Islam, then what's the point of me living? And as I was crying, out of nowhere, I heard an audible voice. I heard the name Jesus. So I you know, looked up to the heavens and I opened my hands and had tears going down my face and I said, Jesus, I'm like, I don't know who you are, but if you are who you say you are, please reveal yourself to me because I can't go on living life like this anymore. And that was the first time ever from praying that I ever felt any form of peace. The boyfriend that I was dating, he and I broke up and I met a young man who was just so different from anyone that I'd ever met, very loving and it intrigued me and we started dating and um, I was in his house one day and found, I saw that he had a Bible, an open Bible on his desk and I remember thinking, oh, I'm, like, I'm dating a Christian. And shortly thereafter I met his parents and grandparents and I just remember observing them and just thinking, you know, they, they have love, they have this joy, they have this peace and this freedom and it's like I want, I've always wanted what they had and I remember thinking, they have Jesus in their lives. I approached him and I asked him if he would take me to church. Church was great, but I felt like I needed a little bit more. So I asked him if his grandparents would do Bible studies with me. I remember reading Romans 5, 8 for the first time, but God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God's love for us is not a response to our goodness, but in spite of our lack of goodness. And, and at that moment, I realized how different it is being a Muslim from being a Christian. That's when I decided to be baptized and become a follower of Jesus. For years, I lived with a lot of anger towards my dad. Four years ago, he was binge drinking and was dying. And I prayed to the Lord that he would soften my heart 
towards my dad and I'd ask him if he can help me see him the way he sees him. And I was on the phone with my dad and I said, Baba, Jesus loves you. Uh, you could spend eternity with him and us one day and he died on the cross for you and your sins are forgiven if you give your life to him. I said, Baba, do you receive Christ into your life? I was expecting no, but he was an up with a big yes. He said, yes, I do. And I was so excited to hear that. And he said, I'm so excited you know, to see you guys one day. And I said, it's not gonna feel like we're gonna be apart for too long. If you're a Muslim, I would say, there's a verse, John 10:10, 10, 10, where God says, you know, I've come to give them life and to give them life in fullness, you know. The abundant love that He has for all of us is, there's nothing like it. And I know that He wants Muslims to experience that and more. You know, I lived with so much shame, with so much condemnation, with all these things that just weighed me down all these years. And the only freedom that I found from that was only through Jesus Christ.